Well, greetings everyone. I know it's not Sabbath coming. Well, it is. Uh, today's Thursday though, so I don't know how long this is going to take to upload, but I do want to put out a little bit of information, hoping that you all might take it to heart. Uh, as you see on the screen up here, I did this order here of these P51s and P38s. Now, the P38 is a smaller one. The P51's a larger one. Everybody should have these if you don't have can openers. An electric can opener is not going to help you here pretty shortly. And some of you don't even know what these are. These are can openers, okay? And I, I want to show you how to use it just in case you don't know. Now, there's other ways you can open a can if uh, your electric can opener is not going to work or if your other can openers were broke and you can't find one or whatever. Uh, the gathering starts to take place, earthquakes, things of this sort, or are taking place and you've got canned foods and I hope you do have some that are stored up not a whole lot but enough to get you through a couple months anyway uh, this is a little can of tomato paste I had made up some uh, beef ribs here yesterday in my pressure cooker and today I'm going to add me a can of uh, tomato paste to make it more like a tomato soup with the beef ribs in there uh, if you are caught in a situation where you have no can opener, you don't even have one of these, which you can tie on to a little necklace or your keychain if need be. Uh, as I, you know, and I can't send these out. I'd love every one of you had some of these. I'd, I'd send them to you if I could, but there's no way for me to get to the post office or anything to send these things out. So. I'd rather just give you the information. Teach a man how to fish, he'll eat forever, you know, if you give him a fish, he'll eat for the day. Uh, you can take a can like this out onto your sidewalk, and you can keep scrubbing it like this until it wears the lip off the top of the can to where this part of the can would show through. Then you would squeeze the top after you clean off all the metal shavings, and the top part would just pop right out for you. Uh, you might lose a little bit of the contents, but that's one way to open it, of course. You know, another thing everybody should have is a decent hatchet or an axe or both. Uh, this here hatchet is one of the best I've ever owned. This is a uh, Fiskars. Quite expensive, but very, very sharp. And, of course, you could use this to open a can with as well, but you may have injury or loss of whatever's in the can. But I'll show you how to use a P38, and these are, you know, if you got strong hands, this is what I was brought up with, was the little P38, you know, these are the smaller ones, and you got your P51s that are a little bit larger, you know, for those with uh, less stout fingers, or for bigger cans, you know, them big cans, these come in more handy. Uh, I've always had these little ones, I've never really had the big ones until just this week. But I'd like to show you how to use these. What you do is there's a little notch right here that's in there. And it goes on under the lip there of the can. And you twist the top part out. And all you do is apply pressure. And you wiggle it as you go along. And as you can see here, it's doing a pretty nice job of cutting open this can. Everybody should have these. Please consider these things right now. They're cheap enough to do. Another thing that I encourage you all to make sure you have is like supplies like this. This is jasmine rice, and the only ingredients in here is 100% Thai Ham Mali jasmine rice. There's no enrichments to it, no poisons or preservatives to put on it. You can find these things quite inexpensive, about $15 here for 20 pounds of rice, and that will make plenty of rice it'll keep you alive for at least a month let me tell you that you know and if you got a family there's nothing better than to have food to keep people from complaining the time that's going to come on us is going to be uh, even like that that was out in the wilderness uh, there's going to be things that'll come up to see if we're going to complain or if we're going to keep our trust in our king only let's keep our trust in our king only Another thing I highly recommend is that you get like some sleeping bags, blankets, things of this sort that'll keep you warm with the earthquakes that are going to come. Uh, they were prophesied. Our father said that the words that left his mouth are not going to come back void. He said there's going to be these earthquakes. It's going to be quite devastating. 
Uh, it's always best to have something warm. But put your trust in our king only, okay? So just remember these things. Have yourself a, a propane tank or the little tanks or whatever with a, a camp stove, you know. Get yourself enough food to last a couple months uh, for you and your family. It doesn't have to be the best of food, just something to keep you alive until our king intervenes. I don't know exactly how these times are going to end up, but we'll walk through these things here in the next videos to see a little more clearly what will take place and put our imaginations to ease a little. Another thing I highly recommend you get are Bic lighters or other sorts of lighters that will hold the fuel. I know there's a lot of cheaper ones out there. I had bought some of those before in the past and they actually leaked all the butane by the time I got around to using them. So you do need something to start fires with, uh, whether it's a flint and whether it's a flint and steel with some sort of uh, fire starter, whatever it is that you would prefer or choose. But I do highly recommend, especially for those that don't smoke, do stock up a little bit on lighters. They'll come in great for trading. Uh, with that out the way, I do want to uh, bring out what I wanted to speak about today, and hopefully this will post before midnight tonight. Uh, this is the 31st of December, and tonight is the night that the pagan world will celebrate the god Janus, or the goddess, you know, it depends on which way you want to look at it. But that's what January was named after, was this god of Janus. Uh, Roman God. It says here, I just plugged in Janus God under a Google search, and this is the first thing that came up. It says, in Roman mythology, Janus was the God of doors, gates, and transitions. Janus represented the middle ground between both concrete and abstract dualities, such as life and death, beginning and end, youth, adulthood, rural, urban, war, peace, and barbarism, civilization. Okay, so you can see the similarities between this god Janus. And I think the reason why CERN didn't use Janus as their god, as they do with their goddess here uh, for CERN, which is Shiva. Okay, and Shiva has a lot of the same attributes as Janus, but people caught on to what CERN is doing here with opening portals and such, desiring to do so. And what I find also rather interesting is that a cave uh, or a mine, the entranceway is called a portal. And it also spoke in places like the Book of Enoch where the giants and such, these Nephilim, they have their dwelling underground. Okay, so that's what they're trying to do is open up these portals to release these giants and such back on the earth. Uh, you know, it's just some thoughts that I want you to think about, pray about, pray for one another. A lot of our brothers and sisters are coming under attacks in these last days. But we're all going to be tested and tried. Every one of us have to be tested and tried to find us worthy or unworthy for the kingdom. So let's keep salt in ourselves. Make sure that you're eating sea salt and such. If you're using table salt, please throw it out. Just, this, just as quick as you throw out your plans for keeping this New Year's Eve, if that was in your heart, if you were deceived enough to follow after the god Janus here and their ways of the world, those that follow him, her, the same as they do on uh, Christmas and Esther and all these other pagan holidays, All Hallows Eve, things of this sort, where the demons are very prevalent, uh, please stay inside. Don't go out there with all these demons roaming the earth and these people losing their minds out there following their gods. You know, just stay home. Go to bed early, you know, and, and forget about these plans. If people ask, just, you know, tell them the best you can that you don't have to get into big elaborations about what the god of Janus is about or things because it will destroy their entire world and it may not be time for them to understand yet. Otherwise, they wouldn't be out there celebrating these times. You know, a lot of things we can actually avoid by using discretion and tact. And what tact is, is telling somebody to go to hell, have them look so forward to the trip that they want to send you a postcard once they get there. And of course, you know, we don't want to 
you know, hope that hope or pray that anybody be condemned to hell. In fact, we're supposed to pray for our enemies. So let's pray for our enemies while we pray. Let's get into more prayer, my brothers and sisters. Uh, the demonic forces are mounting up. I'm sure that you've probably noticed these things. You just turn on the news. You'll see it. Uh, the world is going crazy. And I, you know, have nothing but love for y'all that are seeking, truly seeking. Uh, if you came here to condemn, please go someplace else. There's plenty of other places easier to condemn. As far as bringing forth the things that I bring forth, I always have that stress upon me that if I cause any to fall, any of our father's uh, children that are just now turning out to be seekers, if I cause any to fall, if I give false information, things of this sort, I have a greater condemnation, okay? So I'm very careful and, you know, is... As we walk this path that we've been called out to walk, this journey, it gets more and more strenuous, it gets more and more difficult, but it builds character in us. And uh, soon I hope that there will be a gathering. We'll bring out things on this here, hopefully in the next videos. Uh, looking forward to the things that are coming, not so much that it's a joyous occasion, it's going to be horrible. And those that look forward to the destruction, you know, they're... They're a little bit googly in the head, you know, but, you know, to look at it as if you were going to the dentist and you finally made it in the chair when the gathering comes, that, that's one thing. Because, you know, the most difficult part is already over. Just going to the dentist office is, you know, probably the most difficult part because afterwards you're either sedated or whatever and things take place and then, and then you heal. But it's going to be a lot different when the gathering takes place because this earth is going to fall. It's not going to rise again. Only the place of the gathering is going to have any security at all. In fact, the whole earth is going to see this and there's going to be nations that flow onto that place. Uh, don't know where it's going to be at yet. Could be South Africa, who knows? Who knows exactly where the gathering is going to take place? I'd sure like to hear it if you do know. But as far as scriptures speak, I have not seen it yet. I don't know of anyone that our king has revealed these truths to yet. I'm not one. I certainly don't know. I would that I did know. And then, you know, at the same token, I'm glad that I don't. Because all there would be is opposition. And when people come with opposition, you know it... It frightens me because of their soul. When we fight against truth instead of proving all things, and I do ask you all to prove all things. I'm not saying to go off and, you know, look all over everywhere you can for this God Janus seeking out Janus, okay? I'm, I'm asking that you seek the kingdom, you know, a hundred times more diligently than you would after this God Janus to figure out whether what I told you is true or not. But it took years of research and it wasn't like I was going after this God of Janus in the research. It's just that during my years of research, I came across different things, uh, not even specifically looking uh, for things concerning Janus there which I don't even like to say. Uh, I always avoided ladies whose names were Janice uh, because I don't like saying it. I don't like these names on my mouth. It, it makes my mouth taste bad even <laughs> just to say it. But the understanding that I came to was because of the researches that I have done in different subject areas and such that brought up these gods and I saw the full picture when I was searching out the calendar. I, that's where I had found out that the names of, you know, the months and the days are basically named after gods. And that's where I found out when I said that, you know, January was named after this Janus. So, you know, you have to prove all things. Uh, don't be celebrating tonight. Please don't be celebrating any new year tonight because there is no new year starting tonight. The new year actually starts with the first month of our Father's holy calendar, a sacred calendar, which is the month of Abib. Uh, usually in March, April, or May, you'll have the first month. And of course, you need the green ears of barley on Zion to be sighted. 
in such a state that the heads will be ready to offer up a wave offering and the fine the flower to be made from it as an offering to our Heavenly Father to bring forth the wave loaves and such so that we can eat the grain. The tabernacle that Moshe had built in the wilderness was but made after that which was and is in heaven where our king right now he's our high priest and I know that there are some that might want to argue against that because certain people may have wrote about it that may not be agreed upon or whatever but our king still is the high priest that was what he was called out to be as well as our mediator so you know please do research you know but keep it more toward the scriptures and just understand that most of these pagan celebrations come from these gods uh, most of the things that Americans do most things that Saudi Arabians and you know the whole world are walking and lusting after you know Islam and such are these gods and goddesses though they may not even know it as I stated before, all the American Army's vehicles, for the most part, have the stars painted on them, the pentagram, you know. And these things are symbols showing dedication to Satan and her ways. So let's get rid of these idols. Let's get rid of these symbols. Uh, we don't need little uh, necklaces or anything with talismans on there or you know, St. John or any of these things on there, St. Patrick or whatever, Mary, you know, these things aren't even the people that you think they are attributed to to begin with. These are other gods and goddesses. Mary was worshipped way before our king was ever born. Semiramis was Nimrod's mother, and he married his own mother, brought forth Tammuz. Well, a lot of worship, Mary worship, came from Semiramis holding the baby Tammuz in her arms. And this, of course, you could see in Indian cultures as well. All across the earth, where Shiva and all these other gods and goddesses are worshipped, most every culture has had a woman holding a child called by one name or another. Christianity calls it Mary and Jesus, but all these other cultures throughout time have had these deities that they had worshipped, the mother-child reunion going on. So, you know, just keep these things in mind. I, I hope you do. I pray that you start studying the scriptures. Remember that we are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father, as it says in Matthew 4.4. 4. But it also stated in Deuteronomy the same thing. And you got to realize those children out in the wilderness, they were eating bread. That's what they lived on for almost 40 years. That's what they were given to eat was this manna, this bread that came down from heaven. And yet Moshe had said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. That's what man must live by is the every living word. And that was spoken of in Deuteronomy in a time when they were eating bread that was sent from heaven every day, yet that was spoken of. And that's why I bring out also in Matthew 4.4 4, where it's speaking of our Messiah. You cannot just live, you cannot have salvation just saying, oh, I believe in the Jesus or whatever. You have to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of our Heavenly Father. And he told us not to go a-whoring after these gods and goddesses so if you made plans tonight to celebrate the god Janus here, please stop. Don't do it. Go to bed early. Uh, let's not get into discrepancies as to when your friends and family might say, well, why didn't you come over and, you know, partake with us? Well, you don't need to give a big explanation because they're going to cuss you out anyway if they have no understanding if they had understanding they wouldn't be asking why you didn't come and participate okay it's a it's as simple as that so let's not throw our pearls cast our pearls and such before the swine and the dogs or they'll turn and rend you there you know you don't have to tell them everything because it'll put a stumbling block before them to begin with just let your actions be enough. You don't have to be preaching to your family or friends. 
Uh, if you're a mother or a father and you have children, yeah, you should be instructing your children in the way to go. Unbelieving spouses, the same thing. You should let them know there are certain laws that you're going to live by for now on and expect your household to do the same. If they want to leave, let them leave, you know, but don't chase them or run them off. All these things that we do from now on, let it be in the love of our King, you know. So with that, I know it, it, I've given you a whole lot to think about. Please, you know, if you got controversy, go someplace else with it. I, I'd rather not hear it because uh, right now in these days, I'm desiring to pray more for our brothers, our sisters, those that will do the will of our Heavenly Father and did not put up with controversy by anyone that's out there that just chooses not to keep the laws and commandments and is trying to find an excuse why not to, I'm not going to give it to you. And nobody here on this channel that's a regular is going to uh, give you that permission either because those that come here are seekers. And hopefully the reason you're here is because you're a seeker too. Let's turn from our old ways, our father said. My thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. Uh, we have to change. Our Father will not change. We have to change so that our thoughts become the thoughts of our Father, and our ways become His ways. We've got to practice. we got to put a whole lot of things out of our life. We have to change. We change daily, especially when you first start walking in the faith, when you find out that, you're not to be eating the unclean thing or even touching it. And now you got to throw out bowling shoes and all sorts of things that may have pork in it. It's not an easy thing for people, especially when you may have saved up for months to get these things to find out that all they are are things to defile you and to open the doors of hell for you. But that's what this God Janus is for. She's the one or he's the one that opens these doors and gates and transitions just the same as the goddess of CERN, Shiva here, opens doors and portals, things of that sort. And they have very similar attributes between Janus and CERN as stated, but people know more about CERN today than they do about this god Janus. If they had used Janus as their mascot for CERN, then many people would probably have turned away from celebrating this night that's coming. And when you do celebrate this night, if you do celebrate this night, do know that the devil is there dancing with you. So with that, I love you all. Let's pray for one another. And uh, let this next Sabbath be a complete delight and every Sabbath thereafter. Let's study, let's research, but let's pray for one another. The time is coming. It's getting shorter and shorter. If you cannot see these things, read your scriptures a little bit more diligently, and they should open up to you. Pray that our King open your mind to see the truth that He desires you to see. And though you're not going to come in contact with our King directly until you get through the schoolmaster, the give or take 613 laws that show you how to keep the Ten Commandments, it's the only way to get there. But when you pray, your Holy Spirit, the little bit, the schoolmaster that's in you, goes for you on your behalf before the throne of our King, where our King is sitting on our Father's throne. And Holy Spirit is speaking the things that you are needing and such, so that our King can provide it for you. But when you start keeping the laws and commandments to the point where the schoolmaster can turn you over to our king. Our king will deal with you personally. And he does. And with that, my friends, please prove all things. I love y'all. And uh, let's hope that each and every one of us make it to this gathered place, this place of gathering. It's going to be quite exciting, the things that are coming up. Things that I've already showed you and things that you're seeing in scriptures being led by the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth to come to understand. Some of these understandings are way greater than those things that even King David understood. These things are greater than what Solomon understood. These things are greater than what some of the prophets and such have ever understood. 
we can know more than our forefathers and they made the kingdom with the little knowledge they have but in these last days the knowledge is being poured out however there are some that are rejecting it and as stated our father said that my children perish for a lack of knowledge so let's not be those people and let's pick up where we had left off and forgive one another forgive our enemies forgive all so that we too may be forgiven let's pray for our enemies if you love your friends big deal you know i mean all friends love their friends but to love your enemies as yourself that that's a tough thing to do but we need to practice these things show our king by Holy Spirit that you are practicing and Holy Malachim will be witness to these things the books are going to be opened in that one day the books will be opened now what are those books sure the book of life is there but there's also books being written about you personally you alone you've got at least two devils that are around you writing every single thing they see you do and everything you say they write down in the same way the holy malachim are doing the same they're keeping an account for your soul and with that my friends i do love y'all i don't know if i'll be bringing a video on sabbath depends on how long it takes for this one to build up uh, but i do love y'all and when i see you again i'll see you again with that i say bye